Bill Browder, CEO of Hermitage Capital Management, head of the Global Magnitsky Justice Campaign, and an author. Bill, thank you for being with us as always. Uh, there is blood in the water, serious challenges to Vladimir Putin's leadership right now. What's your assessment of the recent developments? Well, ba basically, Putin for the last 23 years has has tried to demonstrate uh, a sort of brutality and, and force that that has scared everybody uh, into submission. And that's that's been his main ability to be in power is just to show everybody that he's the most, most ruthless guy. All of a sudden, in one weekend, that whole um, myth has been shattered by uh, Yevgeny Prigozhin and, and a gang of, of mercenaries who basically rolled their tanks and rolled their uh, trucks into Rostov without any um, resistance, took over the military base, then went to Vernej, and then on their way to Moscow. And, and even though they said, uh, you know, he, he has um, backed off and gone to Belarus and negotiated his withdrawal, um, what this shows to the world and shows to the Russians is that Putin is not the strong man. And if he's not the strong man, other people will have a go. And so either Putin has to now reassert himself or um, he's going to have his days are numbered. How much power does Prigozhin have right now with some of Russia's elite within the military ranks? Well, at, at this point, I think everybody is is going to ground any anybody who was a supporter of his is saying I had nothing to do with it because they don't want to be on the other end of a Putin purge. But uh, so it, I, I'm not sure where Prigozhin stands going forward because everybody is going to be focused on. Uh, you know, loyalty to Putin versus Prigozhin. But what, what we do see now is is that um, Putin is is a weakened dictator. He's a weakened strongman. And in Russia, weakness is despised. And uh, Putin is going to be doing everything possible to try to reestablish himself, to try to show that he's not this, this weak man. Um, and maybe he'll succeed. But if he doesn't succeed, um, there will be either Prigozhin or another Prigozhin-like character that has a go at him. And, and th these things are, are, are very, very hard to, it's very hard to put this genie back into the bottle for Putin after what happened last weekend. We also are now seeing what appears to be some satellite images of a buildup of Wagner base in Belarus. What do you make of this and Belarus's role in this uh, ongoing uh, development? Well, so what we know about Wagner Group is that they're the only fighters that that um, that uh, the, the 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 Ukrainians had had a respect for. The um, Wagner Group were the ones who were very professional, um, actually actually professional killers because they were not not nice people at all. But uh, uh, to the extent that they've pulled out of um, uh, Eastern Ukraine, that that's a big bonus for the Russians. To the extent that they are now regrouping in Belarus. With the potential to be attacking from that side, that's a very ominous sign. Um, I don't know what's going to happen. Uh, I, I don't know what to make of these these new satellite images, other than to say that if they are potentially warriors that are going to be attacking Ukraine, um, th this is a, a very unpleasant development for sure. It's a period of uncertainty, and knowing Putin like you do, are you surprised that Prigozhin didn't face a more serious consequence? Are you surprised he's still alive? Very much so, and and again, this 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 points towards the weakness of Putin. I mean, Putin has has jailed many people I know well, many friends of mine who are just giving speeches about being anti-war, um, giving speeches about detesting Putin, giving speeches about his human rights abuse. And they're sitting in jail from anything from eight years to 25 years. And here's a guy who actually organized an armed rebellion, um, uh, took over military bases. Uh, the normal response to that from Putin should be to take him to Red Square, put up a guillotine and chop his head off. Um, but instead, they, they he said, oh, everything is forgiven. Off to Belarus you go. It's very odd. And, and it suggests there's a lot more to the story that we don't know. It suggests that, that Prigozhin holds a lot more cards than, than we, we thought. And it suggests that Putin is a lot weaker than anyone anticipated. Right. And with cracks in his armor and being further pushed into a corner, um, describe your level of concern. How concerned should the West be and the rest of the world about what he may be capable of if he's running out of options? Well, so my, I think that the, the the first thing that Putin is going to do is is a major purge inside of Russia of anybody who he thinks has been disloyal. He is going to go after everybody 
who didn't uh, pledge their allegiance to Putin on the uh, on that route from from uh, Ukraine to Moscow. He's going to go after all the military leadership that he suspects was siding with Prigozhin. He's going to go after government officials who he thought might be might be disloyal, and he's going to go after oligarchs. So the first part of the uh, cornered rat is going to be a reaction in Russia. And then, of course, the other thing he needs to do is project strength. And so um, at, to the extent that, that he can, if he has the ability to, he's going to do really nasty stuff in his war in Ukraine. He's going to, he's going to kill more civilians, as we saw earlier today. Um, he's going to do terrorist plots like blowing up the um, uh, dam like he did a few weeks ago. Um, you should expect every bit of nastiness to come from Putin because the, the only way that he knows how to operate is to be, uh, you know, a total killer and a, and a and a wild man in the hopes that we all cower and don't want to confront him. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider, and don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.